We've got audio. We back. All right. I think we're going to give away some of these uh, double fine bundles, um, right? This, yeah. Two of these it guys. It includes a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think it includes Brutal Legend, the Amnesia Fortnite stuff from last year, which includes Brazen, which uh, Brad, Andy, Brazen. me, Derek, yeah, Jeff, wow, that was well, a, most of us worked on this This thing. is like the Brazen team. I didn't yeah. even realize yeah. that until now. Yeah, it's funny. So get on That's there. There's crazy. probably at least time. nobody playing it <laughs> on Steam right now, but maybe you could play it with three of your friends. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to run our little tool here and announce a winner. And if you'll private message me, I'm DF John. You'll see me in the chat, and we'll hook you up with one of these codes. Uh, did you just do it? I did. Kirby Tales Seven. Hit Whoa. me up. Kirby cool. Tales. Kirby Tales Seven. Oh, I can write you a message. Actually, I'm going to write you a message right now. Well, actually, I need to wait for, yes. Kirby Tales, post to me, and he you will win you, a right? thing. <laughs> All right. Actually, he, he, is, he is in there. So Excellent. That is cool. Okay, Let sweet. me send this thing real quick, and we'll send one more. More drum rolls. Do we have a drum roll? We should get one. Any of uh, you guys play drums? No. I don't no. play drums. I play the saxophone like a sucker. You should play you should saxophone. One of these teams, saxophone doesn't get the ladies. It All right, it? here we it go. go. No, it goes in order. It goes the lead singer. But dude, careless whisper. Followed by the uh, careless whisper. Guitar careless player. Whisper. Second winner. <laughs> you talk careless about whisper. saxophone. That's, that's the first thing you think about. Winner. Careless whisper. Sex Never sex mind John Coltrane. Okay, wait, wait. Any okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Some, I was just trying to fill time. I was just trying to fill time. Okay. I should have brought my. I'm learning to play ukulele, so I should have brought that. T K Damon. D A Damon, right? You say it yeah. Damon, not or Demon. Demon, I say it's Demon. It's da Damon. My yeah. first encounter with that with that word was uh, World Doom. or Warcraft. Warcraft One had demons uh. you could summon. They're demons in Doom. They're demons in Warcraft One. Man, it's a difference. Yeah. So T K Damon, hit me up uh, or post in the chat so we know you're here and we'll get on with stuff. Okay, sweet. Uh, hey, welcome to Art Couch, Jeremy Thibodad. Hello. Environment, and not Hi. just an environment artist. I was, I almost just called you an environment artist. I am. What is your official title at Double Fine Production? I think it is environment artist. Is it environment <laughs> artist? All right. Well, I think this, so. Yeah, you're pretty good at, at <laughs> making environments. So uh, you've been at Double Fine for, I feel like people three at home years? might not know who you are. So about three years, right? Yeah. So you oh, worked on four. you worked yeah. on Trench. Yep. Right First out, game. Right awesome. out of the gate, which was sweet. Um, and then what have you worked on in between? It was like the cave was there. The cave up in there? Some Uyam or Guam. Some the, what's upon a monster. monster. Okay. Uh, and then Space Space, a little bit of Space and sp Space. Some Space Space. And now yeah. uh, you're a massive child seeing it up. Mm -hmm. And before us, uh, you worked on Dead Space? Those? Oh, yes. Yeah. Did you work on one as well? I worked on one and then I was on one, two for a little bit. And then two for a bit. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to show some... I'm going to show some of the video game. So uh, we showed the salt stacks, which was kind of like the second environment last time. Um, and that was super cool. So we thought we would show the one that Jeremy's been working on, which is the uh, Tidal Pool Desert is what we're calling it. It's probably going to need a real name, which We've been we may it have. Dry sea. Dry yeah, sea. yeah, the dry sea. Yeah. Uh, Dridal Pool Desert. <laughs> Dry, I think dridal pools. pools. I think the dridal pools are uh, that's gonna stick. So this was Derek's original concept for it, <laughs> and uh, this was cool. Um, I don't know. These were like all his like cool tidal pool uh, references and stuff for it, and this was like the original concept. And yeah, so we did not do any like breakouts, right? We just used this straight away, pretty much. And yeah. then um, you just went from this image like straight into the game. And, and then Frederick sh made like a concept three oh, concept that's piece. Right. That's right. He amazing. sketched some that's right. And it looked exactly like that. I wish like we that. had that to show. Yeah. Oh, did any of that get in? Like, was that? Did yeah. Actually, some of like some of the coral trees, or his, and then I tried to use some of his like mountain things, but it was super complicated. They were so like the geo was so messed up. Yeah. Like, they're just making more. Yeah. He just sketched it out in ZBrush yeah. for like a three D exploration. I gave but, him a lot of reference of pincushion stars, which are what those kind of brownish, yeah, poking up things look like to me. And so it's cool to see those in there. I'm excited. I totally love the coral cactus things. <laughs> I think they're like just weird and creepy, and they fit the um, uh, they fit the faceted style really well. Yeah. I, I think they're awesome. Like, they're not really cool. Can you I, zoom out? I can totally zoom out. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, so you'll also notice if it's coming through, you'll hear the music. Um, they're, they're hearing it. We have placeholder music. Uh, is Fog it too loud? I just asked if it's We've okay. We've got Fog of okay. War that they haven't seen. Yeah. People are saying it's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, That's true as well. So we have um, one of our new programmers, um, Matt Enright. I'm sure that he'll be on uh, Team Stream probably the next one in January. Uh, he kind of took another stab at the Fog of War, and you'll see that it's this like, uh, I don't know, you want to talk about the Fog of War? Like it's different that in every made? level too a little bit, so we're still tweaking it. Yeah, yeah we're, still, we're still tweaking it, but this is the, a big step forward from what we had before. Yep, and it, it's definitely more functional and more playable, and he's also exposed a lot of the parameters so that it can be tweaked per level, so the, like in this desert level it feels a little bit more sandy, which is great. Um, you'll also probably notice that we have um, some enemy placeholders in there. So here's this, <laughs> this creepy growth demon that somebody, Jeff has, has put in. So they called out, look at those hot growth uh, swimsuits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and someone else says they look like life vests. They kind of do. It's underpants. Enormous wedgies. And that was that was definitely something that we called out with the uh, with the concept. Yeah. Where we're like, yeah, okay, we're going to have to like revisit it. And, we'll and, fix that. And check we? that out. We'll fix it. Um, but the hands and the ball are awesome and the, the legs. But yeah, and you'll see them when they're like moving the around. They're really, really, really creepy. Um, we also have, so this was, we talked There's about some a little away bit team. Like the yeah. away team feeling. Uh, <laughs> of, so the female armor has not been done yet. So these, these lady, uh, lady, lady caber jacks back here. And then we don't have the physics of them on Caber Jills, that's right. We're not calling them caber Jills, but it's... It's sort of funny. To Jeremy Mitchell said they're looking like they're going to yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, yeah, yeah, this one in the middle totally looks like she's starting to yoga, yoga class. That is amazing. Um, but yeah, there's there's also, what, did, what were you saying? I was just saying that the, the, the hunters, their, their physics sim hasn't been applied yet, so their, their cloaky stuff is flowing out. And right, right, out that's going to be so all. you'll see that. Right. Um, also, uh, hair color and skin color is in yeah. there, so you can see uh, this female caber jack back here has darker skin, um, and this uh, male hunter has lighter uh, lighter hair and lighter skin. And I so flipped cool. when I saw the first redhead in the game. I was like, yes, thank Somebody God. said there's a disproportionate number of redheads. Well, I wonder why. Well, it's because <laughs> me and Dan are making sure that the world is righted. <laughs> Gingers will rise again. Um, we also have... Oh, <laughs> one shot. Yeah. Amazingly... Amazing placeholder animations from, from Jeff Solis. He knocked out all, all of the of placeholders them. in like a couple days, I think. There's so yeah. many new demons too. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 we have all of the demons that we're planning on already in yep. the game in terms of their, their model and space animation, so it's super sweet. Um, and right now, like the demons basically come in two types. There's either melee or ranged, and they're all the same. There's no different tuning. So we're, we're testing the game right now with just these two different guys. Um, so that we don't, you know, we're gonna have a system to like spawn different types of enemies that are more difficult, but in the right proportions. We don't have that in yet. Um, oh. So, so yeah. they're all using the effects, um, the placeholder effects that we have from the forgetfulness demon that has been in there in a while. You'll probably see some of those running around as well. Um, and there's another yeah. thing in there. Oh, we, we see the small growth demons, right? There, here comes one. Hand snake. And um, there's also a black ball in the background. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yep. But yeah, is there anything specifically that um, you guys would want to talk about the art that's been done? I feel like, um, so we have... Well, this is not a final map. Right, we should just put that out there no, before we start. No, this was an art Absolutely. test map that I right. then added spawns to just so we could play around with but it. But we did art test maps for all of the regions so that we've got as much of it figured out as we can before we start production. So next year when we come back and we start making maps for real, all of these pieces we can just start laying out new yep. maps. Yep, and we have, and it was really cool to be doing these sort of like art tests um, for all the maps in parallel with getting the kind of like core tactical mechanical gameplay up and running yeah because um john and i and really all of us on the team have been able to like learn a lot from the actual process of like being able to play the game now it's like we have ai with hp things can die like blah, everything yep. is like really working um and yeah we've just been able to learn a lot about like where we want to take the game and that helps us kind of define the the map rules that we have yep and even this wasn't built even though this wasn't built for combat it has some unique spacing in it, so it's easy just to throw in some enemy spawners and see how it would, it would roll. And, and we learn a lot from that in terms of the, the sight distance, things like that. Um, 
Something else we've added recently, we talk about the, you wanna talk about the corruption node real quick? I'll just say what that is, that black ball. Uh, yeah, so you can yeah, see yeah. this thing, this is a, this is so a this is a little placeholder placeholder ball that's hanging out back here. Yeah, so the idea is that um, because these are kind of demonic incursions into these areas of land where they're gonna corrupt the, the land, that they'll actually have these nodes for which the corruption come out. Maybe that's even where the enemies enemy spawn from. So it's kind of a static object right now that if you take it out, um, you take out, if you take out all of these, you'll be able to win the map. So you could kind of hurry around and try to fight, you know, destroy these before you attack all the enemies. The enemies are going to kind of stop you from doing it. So we're just playing with some different objectives so we can have these on the map and we can be a different objective than just kill all the enemies and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's promising in an early state and we'll we can make it cooler. Yeah, and we've been talking about having that also, um, also be tied to the tactical corruption. So. On the strategy map, like we'll be showing that on the next team stream, like we've had a little bit of progress on the actual corruption system for like, like how you're battling the, the the time corruption on the strategy layer, based on how corrupted. A re Whoa, Whoa, where's that guy going? <laughs> I haven't seen that. What is going on there? So Jeff said that like when they increase the fog range. Yeah. Some some guys are getting spawned outside the borders. Oh, all right. So like, you won't be able to beat this map. <laughs> Okay, weird. <laughs> that dude was totally like hustling in yeah. the... Uh, yeah, and it's weird because it feels like it's outside the... Well, what we did was, right? <laughs> yeah, we added a, a border, a pro programmatic border to the entire level, all the levels, I think, to like, um, to be as, this border area where the camera can kind of turn around okay, and the... Um, I think it was also for the Fog of War. And for Fog of right? War. Allowing so you the, the, the Fog of War to out. extend, you know, out yeah. beyond the playable space. So um, currently we have to make sure that we border the entire inside area of the map with blockers or that will happen. Um, and we've been showing off like a ton of these like new tactical features. So welcome to Team Stream, we programmer Chad Dawson. Chad, how's it going? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's, All right, can it's do not that. that bad. All right, <laughs> not that bad. Yeah. Oh, you came oh, in right at maybe, the was there only maybe one Maybe there was only one node on this map. I think there is. That's the other thing that Andy didn't know. He keeps saying this map is really hard. All you have to do is find the node and kill it. You got lucky with the spawn there, but it's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, we also have a system right now where we're, we can layer in multiple spawning sets on each map. So we basically can turn one map into as many missions as we want to with different player starts, enemy starts, <coughs> Uh, corruption node starts, etc., and it's really easy to set those up. So I'm excited about that. Um, so I have not we're going to make as many map maps yet. as we can, but we also can it make those awesome. maps into many different missions. Look how different the Fog of War looks on this one. Yeah, right. Yeah. See, look at that. That's the other thing that's cool about Team Stream is that we get like, you know, even people on the team haven't seen like the the current status of the build, and it's it's pretty sweet. To, I don't know. It's yeah, I like as it. we're testing it, particularly on programming, we're usually kind of fixing bugs, so we're just on either Danger Room or, you know, the basic mangrove test map we've been on, so Yeah, and that's, I mean, that... It's cool to see the other maps. The art team's really yeah. doing amazing. And one thing, I mean, we haven't pointed this out yet, but you see the brown stuff there? That's actually a bug right now. That's the corruption shader that actually looks this really cool, <laughs> as is. Um, it's not meant to be there right now, but it looks awesome. It's kind of procedurally created and then it moves and grows and moves up and down the blockers and stuff. So uh, and Matt's working on that and it's super cool. Yeah, hopefully we'll show that off in the next, um, in our next stream. Jeremy's uh, next stream, Matt. Thanks, man. But yeah, Jeremy, is there anything that you want to say about like the, you know, creating this thing and like what, like how you did the pants, like how you did the oh, external yeah. parts of the level or like any of the, um, like, turn off fog of war to see more stuff too. The pants. Oh, that's true, I, I will do that. The pants were kind of hard because initially we, we're trying to make it like kind of unique for every level, but then that kind of took a long time. So we just made these like hero pieces, and hopefully yeah. we can just like use those like and multiply, uh, duplicate them, like spin them around. So and, like, this big guy right yeah, here. Yeah, there's like two of them. Just because like it took a long time doing unique pants for every level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then these 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 things right here yeah, are these part of the hero piece or are those set dressing? It's just all set dressing. That, so so basically the hero piece is just like has a bunch of empty holes yeah. in it. 
and then so you can place a bunch of clones of this guy, mm -hmm. and then you can actually like go in and place a bunch of different things yeah. in all of them. So, so they look they all different. And you have like this big tree right here coming yeah. out of this one, so it looks different. It looks pretty well. I think. Yeah, and it's like I mean, you know, people will probably not even notice unless we specifically point it out on a team show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Now, I've got a question though, because this was kind of new to me. But you said hero pieces. Oh. And yeah. I've never heard that terminology before it's for like a, a landmark <clears throat> object or something giant that. Thing. Yeah. Like a weenie, you know, <laughs> in some games. It's just a giant um, like piece of geo that it's like in, in Does the, that come from Brutal? So, where where does hero piece come from? I think from? that it that came from Brutal Legend. Um, Brutal there Legend? were things like the um, we'd have to ask Lee, but it's I just like a really his, important piece of geo yeah. in the environment. It's, and it and it's basically like like most of why it's important is that it it's like pixel density is huge. That's it's big, like it's yeah. like or pixel density is that what you would say? Right. Is that it takes up so much of the screen when you look <clears> at it <throat> that it's like it is it really important nice. <laughs> just yeah. like by definition because when you see it, it's really really huge and it's gonna like take up all of your yeah. like vision and all in so many pixels on your screen right. that it needs to like have enough detail to hold up mm -hmm. when it's like that big. So it's like a character kind of because like characters are the heroes and like. Is that much kind of, like that much detail to hold up? Those guys are awesome. Yeah, like Kristen, like it was weird when you start this level because when I started the level because when you have that like flat floor, yeah. it just looks like this weird, like artificial surface. But then like when Kristen came, or Kristen came in and put like all the sand textures and stuff, and it, it works. Feels, this one feels really different. This yeah. this sort yeah. of like darker texture here with all that I like kind of that a lot. zigzaggy stuff on yeah. it. It looks awesome and it works really well. It's cool that we can like match Derek's concepts as close as we can on this on this project. And and you guys are doing a lot from one maybe two pieces sometimes. Like we're just we're just jamming this stuff out. Yeah. So it's a lot of interpretation and, and artistic decision making and direction that you guys have to do with every piece. Did you guys talk about the um Buffs, the defense, and the heal. No, no, that's that's yeah. something brand new um, that we haven't actually we haven't really talked about. We haven't talked about traits. So yeah, like this um, this chevron, uh, this up chevron in this character. So I activated this defensive skill. This and this is just a test um, for the skill system and the buff system that went in. Um, and basically, like you can just see that little green chevron, meaning like, oh, this character has a buff on it. You'd be able to either see that um, in the final game, like on an icon that you could hover over and like get a tooltip for like exactly what kind of buffs are on it, or going into like the more um, uh, what would you call it? Like I forget what we call that system, but the more detailed character view, right, so you can right. see like all of the buffs and debuffs that are affecting that character, see all their stats, things like that. Um, but yeah, this was something that. Um, we sort of just <coughs> pulled out of you pulled that right out of uh, right out of New XCOM, right, Chad? Just as just like, a way you know, just we kind of categorize yeah. your buffs as positive or negative, so ones that help you out or go against you. But um, it's interesting now. Patrick got the trait stuff in. I don't know if you have any asthmatic characters. No, I don't. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we have asthma implemented in this game. That, you can pass that's it down been, genetically. That's been plagued. That's one of the worst ones to get on your character right now because he can only Three. move half the distance every now and then, so. I cry a little bit every time I see a red-headed asthmatic red caber jack, because I just really <laughs> identify with that guy. <laughs> um, so here's a corrosion demon placeholder guy. Um, you guys talked awesome. about the player color stuff? Um, we did a little bit. Okay. Do you want to talk about exactly how we did it? Um, because it's great, like, <clears> the, um, uh, well, I, you know, my so previous art squad, I had to I had Artistically to right now, it's not, that's probably not how we're going to color the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Derek's doing some drawovers now of kind of we, where we might draw the... We talked about those okay, earlier awesome. on the thing, and it was, I, I think it was cool. I think people, people dug it. Um, but what we're simulating right now for each of the character houses is sort of the data that we'll probably get from the backers with if they, you know, backed at the level where they can submit their information about it on what their house colors would be and what their sigil would be like and what hair color their family line would have and what... Um, Skin, skin tone as well. So all those are passed down genetically now using our genetic trait system. It's, it's kind of interesting. So you might have a gene for brown hair and a gene for black hair and a gene for red hair mm -hmm. or blonde hair and all those combined together to kind of give you your hair color. So it should be interesting to see when you have children. Some may get the genes from one parent or another and <clears throat> you'll hopefully get to see, be able to identify a family line sort of like that. Like, yeah. 
like sort yeah, of the Lannisters that... in Game of Thrones are <laughs> mostly blonde kind of thing, you know, and you might pick up on that. Uh, we got the projectiles in too. That's kind of new. You'll see the arrows, yeah, the arrows flying, and the. Uh, I, I posted a little animated GIF of the very first shot at it, but it's changed yeah. so much since then. And um, that, and I think the sound have really made a big difference to me, kind of to yeah. making it feel more feel more like a visceral, real, like yeah. a real game. Yeah. And we haven't really experienced on this map because we've had a lot of enemies, but we have the dynamic music changing in as well. Oh, an right. early version of that. So we have two temporary music pieces in right now. Brad, did you talk about getting getting pieces from other musicians and stuff? Like we're oh, cur currently. No, we haven't. You know, I haven't talked about that. Like we're still. Um, I'm still kind of mulling them over. We we just <clears> listened to them, Brian and I, earlier this week, and it was they're really awesome. Like really, really good. Kind of overwhelmed with the production value that we got out of it. It's it's super incredible. Like. Um, what people made in such a short time. We gave them only like a week and a half, and they just busted out some totally ridiculous stuff. And some but of it a little too bard heavy. So, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not naming any names, but some of it ended up, um, felt a little sort of like uh, plucked strings, and it was a little, um, yeah, it sounded sort of more like what you would expect from like like traditional medieval instruments, I guess. So I don't know. Like I, I, I still think I would like it to be a more little bit harpsichord more outside of the box um, than that. Well, what you know, we got something a little more on it. What we got in so far is two pieces from Brian C. I think we might have used them with brazen. This, they are yeah, brazen the, original okay, cool. music. So this there's two amazing. pieces. One of them is kind of lower pace. We use that on the strategy layer. And on the tactical layer, when there's no demons present, but as soon as you get a demon on your screen, you'll, you'll hear I'm, gonna, I'm trying to retreat my dudes out. Yeah, yep. there, and then it switches right. to the lower. Can they hear the music on it? No yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome, yeah. cool. So yeah, and we'll that's so, sort of know, a we'll test build, of like when yeah. enemies on the screen, does the battle music get more intense? And other things could make that happen too. But um, it's sort of just playing with if we get enough music to be able to do sort of dynamic stuff, mm -hmm. what we might do. And then it should, it should hear it kick back, yeah. Way off. Man. <laughs> so and luckily what? that's sort of another benefit of our engine we got, because Brutal Legend was such a music focused game, we got a lot of stuff in for shifting between hmm. different songs and shifting on the right, you know, not right in the middle of a beat, but shifting on kind of certain time steps within yeah. music and sort of that dynamic music system we were able to benefit a lot of from our previous engine work on that. So, <clears throat> one of the things I worked on on Brutal Legend was the stage battles, and that was kind of a crazy system where you had two giant heavy metal stages playing, and where you were on the battlefield, and depending on who was winning or losing the battlefield, each like concert was turning up the music, and you'd hear a mix of the two. But whoever was kind of winning the game, their music would be louder than the other and kind of push the other guy's music back. So. Um, it's cool that we benefit from that game having such a crazy music system mm -hmm. that we're able to do sort of dynamic blending on this without too much work. Uh, a lot of people are liking uh, Happy Brock, Happy Stone yeah. here. <laughs> there you see him there I to the right. He's just like, hey, hey. I Wait, like where is stone. It? Look the right. to the right above that core right there. Right here? Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, my God. I love it. That's I so like good. being a stone. It's almost the Brad colon D. Almost it's pretty oh, close, shit. isn't it? It looks like, like colon D rock. Like Brad rock. Oh, man. Completely oh. accidental. That's amazing. I don't care if it's accidental or not. We're, we're shipping that rock. That is the best. <laughs> these, pla these placeholder animations crack me up, man, every time. Yeah, it's funny, we don't have a heal animation yet, so if heal you happen to use a, a heal pack, you just <laughs> hit them with your caper. <laughs> or you hit yourself with your own shot. I'll have this. I think I have one more character. Yeah, I'll have I like one. the death animals. Jeff did those animations so fast on those guys, but they still have some personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're super hilarious. They crack me up. Yeah, like, here, I'll, I will heal this, this hero right here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, and that's like um, in preparation of like <clears throat> the item system, the inventory system, uh, limited use skills. Like, there's all sorts of things that came out of that, right? 
John and I have been working a little bit on the AI behavior too. Just some initial stuff. We showed before where they would go in the fog of war, but um, John's really done some good work on where your characters spawn on the map, giving variety to that, where the enemies spawn, what type of enemies spawn. That's kind of some of the next system we're hitting as kind of making the maps feel different depending on their layout and where you spawn and kind of what the AIs do. Now that we have these other AI characters in, we're going to want to tweak them and tune them to make them do different things. Some may rush at you, some may hide, some may, you know, heal their, their other guys, so. And they don't have a notion of memory <clears throat> right now, so they don't really know where you last attacked them from. That might be something else we add and fold in there. But they do, if they're in the fog of war, if they're within a certain distance of heroes, then they'll, they'll potentially decide to move uh, or stay put. So they can kind of hold an area or not. So we're still very early, but we're getting some interesting um, kind of emergent behavior out of the guys already because they try to run into a fog of war area if they can't attack you like this guy. So they'll, they'll go and hide, and um, you'll have to kind of figure out where do they end up. Uh, we also have some facing bonuses, so if Brad, if Brad was, was an smart. excellent Master Chalice player, he would have gotten behind one of those guys and really gotten a, a and solid And now you'll see you've got a 108, 108 chance to hit. That's an optimist. That guy's optimistic. So one of our traits <laughs> is optimistic, uh, which inflates your hit percent chance. The visual of it. Under the hood, it's still going to be low. 157, wow. Higher. Yeah, that guy, is, that guy is optimistic as well. But he hit. And there's pessimistic, too, always thinks they're going to miss. Yeah, yeah so. they're, where their hit chance is a lot lower, right? And right now, we don't have a good um, visual for that in the UI and the tactical layer, we'll add that, Ooh. but I think there's some uh, debug stuff you can do that I haven't actually checked it out yet, so. That was interesting that it was following that guy. Yeah, we gotta turn the camera off on those some, guys. Got some bugs. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm excited too to see what we can do to jazz up the animations, do some camera push. We're not you know, planning on doing uh, scripted cameras or over-the-shoulder kind of shots like XCOM, but that doesn't mean we can't do some cool cinematic effects. Um, probably not going to do any cuts. Uh, you know, this game is a tactical game once you have an idea of where things are happening on the battlefield at any given time, but we can push in, do some shake. Um, maybe, I don't know if we can play with depth of field. I don't know what we can do. We, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's going to be sweet. I totally got one of my guys killed while you're talking. Oh no, I didn't terrible. see it. Uh, do you want to take questions? Yeah. All right. 40%. So Mayor F0X0, actually this is a suggestion. He wants to be able to turn off any animations because they're cool until the hundredth time you've seen them. So that, that is interesting. I mean, um, you know, I think we can hopefully put some of that stuff in, in some options to say like, okay, we don't want any cinematic camera pushes. I mean, turning off animations, all to, like attack animations all together, I, maybe someone would want that. That wouldn't be super hard to add, so that's interesting. What do you think about that, Chad? I, I don't know about turning them off all together. I could see like not wanting to watch a long death right. animation where it cuts in and goes into slow-mo or something like that. Like. I've seen that, but I don't know how much we would gain by just having things be in a T-pose floating through the air. <laughs> you know? yeah. That would probably look a little funny and not really gain a lot, but um, I can understand the desire not to watch long cutscenes or yeah. death animations that take long. We've yeah, kind of strived to make most of our animations that you see so far be pretty quick. Um, also, a lot of these things we want them to be snappier in the end. Um, Character movement speed, I think, is the biggest thing, is when you decide to move a character. Like, I think they're a little pokey. I think yeah. they, could take, they could get over there a little bit quicker. That's going to be something we're going to be, um, we're going to be balancing as we go. Um, yeah, I, that's, that's an interesting suggestion. Uh, I don't know, I don't know how many people <coughs> would really want that, you know? It wouldn't be a default, bit. for sure. Yeah. There's definitely some things like XCOM that showing the over-the-shoulder cam and the kill shot that, that they give you options on in that game to kind of turn off that kind of that kind of visual, in, in part if you're trying to play faster or something, maybe you don't want the camera to cut down. Yeah, we'll I, to, I'm we'll all for making it quicker, you know? I, yeah. I think that's great, but I think that 
we can do that without pulling out all of the artistic value of the, of the, of the sure. animations, you know? So we get a couple questions in about environmental hazards, because there's questions yes. about like, well, different maps have different features. And um, yeah, we haven't implemented those yet, but they, we have planned environmental features for each one of the regions. I believe in this <coughs> one it is the exploding cacti, right? Exploding cactus, So yeah. they're, they're kind of going to be, I mean, they're kind of like your traditional show red the barrels, only they're probably not going to be red, although maybe we'll show see the how guys until next time. Joke. Um, so like this will have some dangerous objects in the environment you can explode to do area of effect damage. They might accidentally trigger, which would be cool. And then potentially have some meat chain effects in them. We do have one of them uh, implemented. Do you want to pull up the um, no. that map? No, so not yet. <laughs> no, we'll show uh, later. Later. But we're looking at things like uh, dynamic uh, line of sight blockers or um, destructible tiles. You got to come uh, around both ways on that one, Brad. I guess so. I it don't keeps know. Keeps attack. It keeps convincing. So yeah. that's for that one. Uh, Solar Blitz asks if the demonic nodes will have similar behavior abilities to bombs in the Final Fantasy Tactics. And I mean, we don't have all of the behavior in for them, but the idea is that if you hit them and kill them, then they'll be able to damage, or they'll be able to take out any of the demons and corruption tiles around them, potentially. So you can kind of sprint past somebody to attack the node, and if you're able to take it out, you'll be able to take out that enemy with it, which I think is cool. Um, Bucky Bits, welcome Bucky Bits, asks uh, about Xbox controller tweaking. Um, and when would that happen? Would that be at the end of production? He is a fan of XCOM on PC with controller crowd. Uh, you know, oh, cool. Set up. Yeah, that's something like we're not um, we're not ruling it out. You know, I mean, it's it it's not something that we're gonna just be like, no, we're not gonna do. Uh, it'll just come later. There's a lot of like specific things we would have to do to support it. Um, a lot of like driving the actual cursor with the controller and like a lot of tweaking like that. A lot of the UI will have to be slightly massaged to like let us use a controller in, instead. So. Um, yeah, it's not some. It'll. It'll. I think it'll be something that we had after we ship the the original game. Yeah. Uh, Randolph asks about in, uh, environmental hazards. Will there be environmental buffs or debuffs like evasion armor for standing in thick brush? Um, we already have a slowing tile implemented, where you know, like it takes longer to get <coughs> through. So maybe for a mud path, we've talked about having um, tiles that you can kind of sneak through. Uh, I think we, we, we call those. We don't have this implemented yet, but yeah, we're definitely going to explore that as well. Trying to figure out how we can really make these maps something you can kind of parse, look at, figure out what the best approach is for tackling your particular challenge, and use it, and then have some AI that can either react to that in interesting ways or maybe use it as well. Um, John, you talked about maybe certain traits might even give you an advantage, like you could walk across a slowing tile if you were yes. footed or something like web that. Web foot. Yeah, web, web foot. Webbed foot, go. web feet, <laughs> you know, it's not really hot with the ladies, but you can move through the slowing tiles, no problem. Uh, nice. This is an interesting question from uh, Lil K Warrior or Lil K Warrior. It kind of goes to, to Chad. Will there be? Will we be using any proprietary APIs such as PhysX to progressively enhance the game? So I don't know if you want to talk about like the tech we're using and any third-party stuff, and maybe why or why not we are using some of this. Right. Currently, we're not using physics too much in the game. Um, one of our decisions to kind of have the characters move on a flat plane. Um, as well as the fact that we know they're moving on a grid, so you don't have that random, I'm running into something, I need to detect collision. We pretty much know where all the characters are going to go, what tiles they're going to walk on, and um, can keep them separated. Pretty much like on a chessboard, you'd keep guys on their own squares. Mm -hmm. So currently we're not really using any physics, even the projectiles. We kind of calculate if they're going to hit or not. We don't want it to be the character happens to do a breathe animation and he gets one pixel off and the arrow misses him because you fire at the right time during the breathe. It's, it's not that kind of game where you have to do the collision at that level. Yep. So currently we're not, uh, I think we have bullets still integrated in. Bullets kind of a... Uh, uh, it's open a, source, a, a right? Open source open physics source engine physics we've used engine. for other stuff. Yeah. But we're really not using it for much. Uh, and we may strip it out if we can, but... Um, and that's another thing about yeah. being a Kickstarter project is that we <clears throat> you know, we can some of the open source stuff is one hand one thing, but like you're talking about like commercial APIs like Havoc, you know, we have to pay a lot of licensing fees for that. And so we, we want to make sure we can yeah. stretch stretch the money that we earn from you guys that you guys trust us with and so really definitely pour rather it in the put game. that definitely rather put that in the game. And than, one thing on the on Havoc the physics license. is it it slows down our development both of maps and characters and everything. Mm. If the artists have to go in and put physics capsules and shapes around everything. Yep. Particularly as we're looking at having as many maps as we can make and as many things, it would really slow them down, I think, to have to try to put 
collision capsules around everything and fix all the bugs where character gets wedged in between a bush and a tree because it looked awesome visually, but the, you know, the physics on it didn't match up. So, and we yeah. gained some performance gains from not having to calculate that all the time as well. Yeah, like you said, there's a whole other layer <coughs> of bugs that we have to look for. Um, we do use we use FMOD as a sound tool, right? Yeah, right, as our, our yes, sound that's engine. cool. And there's uh, definitely some middleware that we use. We use FMOD. We use uh, Scaleform for the UI, yeah. which lets us do a lot of like flash tricks, like all of these, you know, like these little banners in the UI, raising and lowering. That's all happening in flash code and action script and stuff, and it's it's just a lot easier to get that in than than doing it ourselves. Um, what else do we? I think those are the those are the major ones. Do we right. use Bink for videos. We do use Bink video, yeah. Um, Which we don't know if that's gonna. There right. might be we, something. We'll we see. might not need that. We're not we're not quite sure if we're gonna if we're gonna use that or not. Um, but yeah, I think we should give some stuff away. All right. What do you think? You because guys ready is, for some it prizes? It is holiday times. All right. Well, we have three more uh, three DF more bundles, but bundles, and then we have one. Hundred dollar massive chalice backer Whoa. package. So oh, uh, backer package. <laughs> backer, you guys, to, we have a lot of fine backer packages. I would say. Nice. Yeah. That's fine. Here we go. Well, first winner is Cloud Lupus. Cloud Lupus. It's like a wolf in the sky. Or, or a disease. Not, yeah, a it's terrible right? disease. Cloud oh. Lupus. <laughs> it's where. You, are in constant pain every time you look at the skyline. So if you're on Cloud it's Lupus, awful. chat or send me a message, DF John. Second, second winner. Okay, second winner. Uh, actually, let me just see. Make sure we can do this. All right, we're gonna do this. Second winner. Actually, let me just put, making sure I note these people so okay, we don't sweet. mess it up. All right, second winner. Here we go. It is. E N F zero Enfu 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 Oh E N F Congrats All right <laughs> Okay <laughs> What All are right. we giving away, Brad? Uh, we're giving away uh, double fine bundles. So it's most of our games on Steam, along with the uh, Amnesia Fortnite bundle. Yes, Mac and Linux, and it has all of the Amnesia yeah. Fortnite um, videos. <coughs> I didn't realize we made like oh yeah ten documentary episodes. Yeah, two player weeks. two player productions. Shout out! They made a, a like full documentary episode every day of the two week span of that thing, which was completely ridiculous. Along with a big wrap up episode and just tons of it's in tons H of HD, stuff. right? I think it's in HD. I think HD. it's in HD, yeah. It better be. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, I believe the, that it yeah, is. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's the downloadable version, so I yeah. think those are sweet. Um, and hold on, I'm sending a little message here. Well, okay. I'll get, get that out of the way. All right, final winner okay, uh, of the bundles is Common Writer 85. Common Writer. Common Writer. That's hilarious. Um, common writer, writer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Common writer. Eighty-five. Sweet. Born in eighty-five. What do you think? I don't know. It's it's a good year. I sure. My wife was born in eighty-five. Really? Yeah. Wow, that makes me feel old. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Makes me feel older. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are old. Okay. So um, our last our last giveaway is for the yeah, massive chalice. Yes, Back excellent. Or pack. So, hundred dollar tier of this fine video game we're making. You'll get to enter your hair color. Yeah, that's that right. Tier, that's right. We actually have the um, hair color in the game, so you'll be able to pick your hair color, um, skin color, and your um, name of your house and your motto and all that stuff, and, and submit it, and it'll show up in other people's uh, in other people's playthroughs, which should be sweet. Common Rider was not born in '85. Okay, okay by good. The way. All right. Oh, geez, and someone said they're born in 92. Now that's going to make everyone <laughs> 92, feel 92, interesting. 92. All right, here we go. Was born, right? Final <laughs> one of the day. Uh, it was... <laughs> oh, no, that's not right. Doberfriend. Doberfriend, congrats. If, Looking forward to... If you're to... already a backer, then you can gift this to somebody else. Just let us know. I'll send you a message. Yeah. Send me a message. Looking forward Let's to leading chat. the Doberfriend clan... The Doberfriend bloodline in uh, Master Chalice. That will be awesome. All right. But cool. We'll get those taken care of. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap this sucker up. You guys want to say anything else before we sign off? This is the end. This is the end of 2013. Final Can you believe year. that? Final team shooting of 2013. <laughs> um, and we're wrapping up pre-production. 
Can yeah, we talked about that. We're, you know, <clears throat> pre-production is going to be over. We're going to be actually like, you know, we've got our, our whole schedule mapped so out. So throwing all this stuff out, starting... We're, yeah, we're going to just scrap <laughs> everything that we've done, start from scratch. That's how it works. Put robots in it. No, no, yeah, <laughs> robots, excellent. Yeah, that's, that's the big... Um, oh, God, no. That's, no, let's not do that. Let's just keep making this game. I think this game is fine. Uh, but yeah, th so we'll be back in, um, in the new year. I think we're going to shoot, I think we're going to take one week off. So the next team stream will probably be in three weeks. I think that is January. Not going to, you know, I forgot the day. It's pretty classy. It's pretty pro. Of me. 10th? The third? I think January 10th. 10th, okay. Will be, will be the next team stream day that we do. We'll take, we'll take Christmas Eve off. So three weeks instead of two weeks. I think that's fine. Um, and we'll have a bunch of new stuff to, to show for that. We'll be midway through production. You know, it'll be started. It'll be awesome. Be midway great. through the first production. Midway month. through the first, yeah, we'll, we'll be <laughs> one week into production exactly. uh, of the game. But we have a bunch of other stuff to show. We'll have uh, the next um, kind of art, art test environment to show off. <clears throat> we'll have um, maybe a little more strategy the, layer. The trait system. Yeah. And probably yeah, we didn't the, touch on strategy the at all corruption this time. system we as well that we yeah. have on. Uh, on strategy layer, I think it'll be really cool. So uh, yeah, come come back next year, 2014. We'll see you. It's gonna be, be an awesome, awesome year. It's gonna you be know, good. Broken Age is coming out in the sure. first part in early January, and um, we have a lot of cool stuff happening. We just announced Hack and Slash. That looks amazing. Yeah, I'm and so it's gonna be that. an exciting year for Double Fine. It'll be sweet. Yeah. And thank you guys for Three supporting games. us, for backing us. Um, as you see, we're working hard on this guy, and it's gonna be a great game. Thanks. All right. See you next year, you guys. Take it easy. Yippee-ki-yay, massive backers. <laughs>